welcome to my channel, Manmade. I found this mask on Thingiverse and loved it so much I decided to make a video on it. These ones should be better than the any surgical mask or N95 mask since these ones have an airtight seal that filters all the air that enters. The first thing you're going to need to do is measure your head so that you can fit the mask to the size that you're going to need. You can see in the picture how to properly measure the circumference of your head. It's across the nose and around the ears. The person who designed it, designed it for a 58 centimeter circumference head. So the equation I used, you get the scaling you're gonna need in percent by dividing your measurement by the measurement that they designed it for and multiplying it by 100. So for an example, I needed to scale mine by 110.3% because if you divide 64 by 58 and multiply by 100, that's what you get. I just rounded mine to 110%. Now this was maybe a little bit on the large side. It wasn't too big, but I wouldn't go any bigger. So if you round, round down. So let's get to a list of what you're gonna need. You're gonna need some quarter inch elastic. Next, you're also gonna need some of the window seal foam. Then the activated carbon actually can be found at most pet stores that have aquariums. Finally, the best price on vacuum bags I found was at Walmart. <clears throat> So the total comes to about $21.59. Now this may seem a little bit more expensive for a homemade mask, but this allows you to make as many filters as you need. These should last months and you have enough to refill several different cartridges. So it should last you a while. The parts I printed in TPU were the files named Flexible Mask Valvey Owl, which is this one right here. I chose the one with holes in it. Um, I originally chose one with hooks but I found that that system doesn't work as well and that it's easier just to get elastic straps. So get the one with holes in it if you're gonna follow my build. Uh, the next thing that you'll need is the flexible mask valve outlet disc and you'll need the inlet disc. And I also created a part for my build so that the valves seal better because the top surface of this mask isn't as smooth as the bottom surface which is against the glass plate. So I printed uh, basically just the surface of the outlet mask um, valve area so that I can then flip the shiny side up or the smooth side up and glue it to the surface and let the disc seal better. You'll understand this better when we get to that part of the build. Um, and finally, the last thing you have to print in TPU is the HEPA cover. For the things you'll need to print in PLA, you'll need the HEPA housing and you'll need the flexible mask valve outlet cover and the flexible mask valve nose clamp. <clears throat> Just a note for the HEPA housing, it looks like it needs supports and I did pr try printing it with both supports and without supports. The ones without supports printed perfectly fine. Also, the outlet cover, you might wanna make this one just slightly bigger because what I found is that it's a very tight fit. It helps if you scale the outlet cover by about 0.5%. Just a note for the part that I labeled outlet valve face version one, it tends to import into Cura incorrectly. The scaling is all messed up. So I'll go through the process of fixing it. I don't know why sometimes it does this and sometimes it doesn't. So I'll just delete it. Reopen it up, outlet valve face V1 and it always makes this really huge. So to fix that, what you need to do is go to scaling after selecting it. Uh, make sure that it's not uniform scaling, so uncheck that box. It should be checked by default. Change the X to 10%, the Y to 10%, and leave the Z to 100%. I don't know why it does this, but that's how it imports it. If you do that, it should fit properly. <clears throat> 